Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. So today we are going to study real number. Real number are basically the numbers which can be represented on a number line. It includes natural number, whole number, integer, etc. So let's start it from the very beginning. So first natural number. We all have basic idea what are natural number. Natural number starts from 1, 2, 3 and up to infinite. In natural number we have even number, odd number, prime number and composite number. Even number are the number which are divisible by 2. Also you can say the number which ends with 0, 2, 4, 6 and 8. Odd numbers are the numbers which are not divisible by 2. So these are the number which ends with 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9. Now prime number. Prime number is a number which is divisible by, by 1 or itself. For example, nine, uh, 3 or 19. Now, composite number. Composite number are the number which are not prime or you can say which have any other factor other than 1 or itself. For example, 4, 27, they have factors other than 1 and itself. In this natural number, 2 is the only number number which is even and prime also one is neither prime nor composite so this is all about natural number next type of number is whole number Whole number includes all natural number and we all know 0. So, it starts from 0, 1, 2, up to infinite. So, we can say 0 plus all natural number is whole number. Third type of numbers are integers. Integers are negative of of all natural number plus whole numbers. That means negative of natural numbers minus 3, minus 2, minus 1 and whole numbers 0, 1, 2, 3. Infinite minus infinite. After that, we have rational numbers. Rational number is number which can be represented in P by Q form. Any number which can be represented in P by Q form. Whereas P and Q are integers and q cannot be equal to 0. Let's take few examples of rational number. If I am writing here 3 by 7 minus 2 upon 19. So these are the number which are in p by q form. Also denominator which is q is not equal to 0. 
Now I have few example out of which we have to select whether they are rational numbers or not. So the examples are 3 minus root 2 upon 7 pi 4 upon 3 0. Let's check out which of the following are rational number. 3. Yes, it is a rational number because it can be represented as 3 upon 1 which is p by q. So it is rational number. In this both the numbers should be integer but as we know root 2 is not an integer so this cannot be rational number. Also pi is also not a rational number. In this both are integer also denominator is not equal to 0. So yes rational number. 0 can be represented as 0 by 1. So yes, it is also a rational number. Sometimes we get confused between rational number and fraction. The only difference is that fractions cannot be negative. So here I would like to add one more statement that all fractions are rational numbers but all rational numbers are not fractions. Now next is irrational number. Irrational numbers can be represented in root m form. Whereas m is a non-perfect square number non-perfect square number for example m can be 2 root 3 not root 4 because 4 is a perfect square then root 5 root 7 etc now i'll explain you irrational number by using a flow chart of decimal expansion decimal expansion decimal can be terminating or non terminating if it is terminating then definitely the number is rational number When it is non-terminating, then again it can be repeating or recurring and non-repeating. In case of repeating, for example 0 0.333, so this is again a rational number. But in case when it is non-repeating and non-terminating, for example, value of pi, this is 3.14 and dot dot dot, where the numbers will be different. So that means this will be a irrational number. The few irrational numbers like one is pi, which is 3.14, one is Euler number and another is golden ratio which is represented by this sign. I have already explained you all the type of number which are represented in Venn diagram form. If I add all the rational numbers and all irrational numbers, then you will get complete set of real numbers. So this is all about real numbers. Thank you. So our next topic is Euclid's division lemma. Here the name is little bit confusing but it is very very easy as it is based on division. So I'll explain you this by using a simple example. If I divide 58 by 9, so this will be 9 into 6, 54 and here comes a remainder 4. We know that 58 is our dividend and 6 Question 4 is remainder 
whereas 9 is our divisor. So we can write it this way also the dividend is equals to divisor multiply by quotient plus remainder. Hence 58 is equals to 9 into 6 plus 4. Here you can see that remainder can be 0 or it can be greater than 0. But it should be less than the divisor. So in this case it will be less than the divisor 9. Let's take few more examples. 43 divided by 3. One more example 7 divided by 12 and 40 divided by 8. Here you can write 43 is dividend and 3 is divisor. You will multiply 3 by 14. 3 into 14 is 42. So still 1 is remainder. In this case also remainder can be greater than and equal to 0. But it should be less than the divisor which is 3. In next example 7 is equals to 12 multiply by here you have to take 0. 12 into 0 is 0. So again we have remainder as 7. In this case also remainder should be greater than or equal to 0. And less than divisor which is equals to 12. And our last example is 40 divided by 8. 40 is equals to 8 multiplied by 5. 40 so remainder is 0 it can be e remainder can be equal to or greater than 0 but less than the divisor which is 8 in all the cases we get to know that this condition is unique okay let's take one more example a divided by b so a is equals to B multiplied by quotient plus remainder. In this case also remainder will be less than divisor but greater than and equal to 0. Which is actually the case of Euclid division lemma. Here are the two conditions. In this statement you can see there is a word unique. Why it is saying unique? Because for any division, you will get one set of solution. Like in this, we are getting unique question and remainder. Thank you.